to lead us through this. Yes, uh, thank you, Kevin, and thank you, George. I would like to highlight two issues on what George said. The first thing, as we will we will see, is the number of people involved in this cause. So that's what also um, contribute to the costs. And the second thing, as I, as I said, the canonization is really not just for the person, it's for the church. So I think I think we have as faithful a moral um, obligation to do that, to present um, Dorothy to the world in in the light of the church as and with the canonization. So just to highlight these two aspects, thank you, George, for your um, answer. So I would like to to share my. Can you can you see it, Kevin? Is yeah, we yeah. see your desktop. There we go. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And I would like to start with with this, George. The the, <laughs> the boxes that you were talking about. Oh, that's wonderful! Wonderful. Yes. <laughs> this was the night of the seventh of December. We had 151 volumes, all walked, sealed, and so on. And I will never, never forget in my life, honestly, what happened on that night. And I, I think I shared this with, uh, with, with you, George, and I shared with Valdry, and Valdry shared this with some of the, the, the members there. And um, it was, I, I think it was really the, the end. So we, we we packed everything and everything was was there. And I remember we were switching the lights off and we were closing the door where these uh, you know boxes were. And I remember George said to me, it's I had a kind of um twofold um feeling. One is uh, peace and one is concern, like um the concern to leave everything here and the uh, awareness that everything is finished now but actually not everything is finished everything is starting from now so I, I will remember that that conversation with George and I and I shared with this with with Valdry. and um, this was the 8th of December so our big big celebration that George were referring to and this was the the last uh, moments of the you know sealing of the box and Cardinal Doran, I remember he was very uh, willing to 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 walk this 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 box. So he was keeping on asking. So should we go on now? Should we seal the boxes? And finally, it happened. So what I will show in this um, slide is what happened from the moment when you shipped the boxes until today. And I will share publicly um, a good step of the cause, which is really, uh, you know, a, an important step on the cause. So when everything was shipped to Rome, the first thing that happened in Rome was the opening of the acts. The opening of the acts is a solemn ceremony, which is done at the presence of some officials there at the dicastery, the where they make a preliminary um, research that everything is done canonically. This is very preliminary. After the opening of the acts, there is the binding of the acts. So whatever you have seen in those boxes are now into white big volumes of the coast. We have 151 volumes. These volumes were afterwards were studied on the validity of the cause. So the dicastery is very precise, is very strict, and they want to be sure that every canonical step has been done during the diocesan phase. So this is the study of the validity. And finally, the dicastery uh, issued the decree of validity. And this happened this week. So it's very recent. So it's another, um, you know, point to to thank god that we have reached this this point so the diocesan phase has been approved in its juridical issues in its juridical aspects so praise the lord so what happens now 
The next phase is the appointment of the relator. The relator is a key role at the diecastery. As I explained to, to Kevin, to George, to David, uh, we should imagine the relator as uh, the professor who guides uh, a doctoral thesis, because this is what we, we really need to do to write a doctoral thesis about Dorothy, about her heroic virtues. We need to prove to the Pope, finally, that she exercised in her life heroic virtues. So the relator is this first role that is appointed there at the congregation and who will follow Dr. Hilgeman in the writing of the Positio. So what comes next is their drafting of the positio. Somebody of you could ask, what is the positio? The positio is this thesis that I was talking about. It's a big volume, should be around 500 pages, where we need to show that, again, Dorothy exercised her heroic virtues. So the positio is final, the final document where we have a summary of all the uh, acts of the inquiry and that will finally be presented to the Pope and the Pope will decide on her heroic virtues according to this positio. Then there is the imprimatur of the general relator. The general relator is the general, is the one who overview all the relators and he gives his nihil obstat. He says, okay, the positio should, could be printed. And finally, there is the printing of the Positio, you will see in the, uh, in the picture. Um, and the Positio will be, is now ready for the study on the merit. You remember the study on the validity has been done before, they have approved the validity, and now we start with the merit, so with the content of the Positio. The first step, is very important, but it depends on the dicastery if to move forward with this or not. The first step is the gathering of the historical consultants. Six are involved, and they need to, to prove, to, mm, to say if everything that we have done with the Positio and with the gathering of the proofs is correct on the historical basis. Um, I said that this phase could uh, take place or not, depending on the um, on the dicastery. So only when the Positio will be drafted, will be printed, the dicastery will, will decide if to proceed with historical consultants or not. But for sure, this is the final Positio, the red, the red one, but for sure the Positio should go um, to the theological consultants, and they are nine, and the theological consultants need to uh, judge whether Dorothy exercised, exercised her virtue or not, and whether she could be presented to the church as a model or not. Um, there are nine theologians, and to move forward to the next step, at least seven, uh, at least six should give an affirmative judgment. Okay, so two thirds must be in favor of proceeding with the cause. Then the Positio goes to the cardinals and bishops that are members of the dicastery for the congregation uh, for the causes of the saints. And they will finally decide again if the cause is worthwhile to go on or not. And finally, the Positio will go in front of the Pope, and the Pope will decide if proceed with recognizing her heroic virtues. At this point, Dorothy, hopefully, God willing, should be declared venerable. So once the decree on heroic virtues is published, uh, Dorothy will be recognized in the church as venerable. So just keep in mind, maybe you, you all know this, but before became a saint, before becoming a saint, there are two other steps. The first is vener venerability, and the second is to be blessed, the beatification, okay? And then only at the end, uh, Dorothy will be a saint. So at this point, Dorothy hopefully will be venerable. 
Now I've prepared something, Kevin, on Miracle. I don't know if this is the right moment or we, I don't know. Yes, uh, maybe there was one question, technical question before moving on uh, yes. that from Jeff uh, Corgan. Of the 15 consultants, how many may typically be women? Well, they, they are appointed by the dicastery. So, uh, well, very few, very few, honestly, very few. In my experience, very, very few. The majority of the consultants, so the six historical and the nine theological, very, especially the, theolog the theologians are almost, all of them are priests. Hmm. that's that's very that's very sad honestly but i need i need to be uh i need to say the truth so this is what i saw in my experience of course one of the one of the priorities or one of the things that many people point to about dorothy's cause is that she is a, a lay woman a mother and that that might be part of some opening up uh, of spaces that the Holy Father has already been uh, doing in other dicasteries. So this, uh, do you want to maybe go, since we're still talking about the Roman phase, if you want to talk a little bit more about the miracles, one of the questions that, that is in the chat is about um, is is about uh, the the length of time. So just just to keep that in mind. And then another question that just appeared is uh, if you can just describe the the difference between servant and God and venerable, because I think that that fits into into this moment. Yes. So I will start with mm, from this from this last question. So what is a servant of God? How how can we describe a servant of God? A servant of God is a person on which a cause of canonization has been started. So actually, when we presented the petition to the church to start the cause, and the church accepted to start the cause, at that point, Dorothy was declared servant of God. Actually, it, it was not a declaration. It's something that happened ipso facto. So since the moment the church decides, she is a servant of God, okay? While the venerable, the venerability is really the end of this process. So where we, where Dorothy are, is officially approved as being somebody who exercised hero virtues in her life. Okay, so servant of God is the beginning of the process. Venerability is the end. So this is the, 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 the difference, okay? So a servant of God, we, we are all servants of God, so to speak, okay? We're all sons of God. We're all servants of God. But the venerability is really a juridic, a juridical step. And it happens after, as you can see here, the decree on Herak virtues. It's an official declaration of the Pope. Because again, the last judge of all this process is really the Pope. So he's the one deciding. And then the second question was the well, time. Maybe just a follow up on that. When she, if and when, God willing, uh, she is declared venerable, uh, does that change any any way in which people can relate to her in, in a spiritual? Does that open up possibilities for for any sort of veneration or anything like this? Okay, uh, we need to be cautious, and the church wants to be cautious on that. Uh, before the beatification, uh, no cult, no official cult is allowed to uh, a venerable or a servant of God, okay? Because a cult, uh, for a cult, the church wants to be sure that there is a miracle that is approved by God that says whatever the Pope has said on the heroic virtues, God has confirmed with the miracle, Okay, so when the beatification is done, at that point, the church is sure that uh, that, sir, that blessed is really with God and, and is really a model. But before the beatification, no public cult is allowed. What do I mean by public cult? For example, um, um, a, a picture of Dorothy with a halo or... Um, I don't know, um, another example could be uh, to, to make some, um, to take some relics and put it in, in below the, the, uh, the altar 
that are those are signs of public cult that are forbidden until the beatification. But until the beatification, all of us as faithful has a right to have a spiritual um, relationship with, with Dorothy. So until that moment, the devotion, which is a private aspect of the cult, which is public, a devotion is allowed. Okay. So until verification, devotion is allowed. After verification, public cult is allowed. So I don't know if it's if it's, so it's I think it's something important to, to clarify. So we are in the phase, God willing, in this Roman phase leading up to up to the venerable, hopefully. Yes. Uh, and then where do miracles fit into this? And and that that can move to your next uh, phase. And I think we'll open up to more other questions from there. Yes. Okay. So hopefully at this point, we will be at the venerability. Then we need a first miracle for the beatification. And then we would need a second miracle to canonization. So that's where we are now. We are uh, trying to reach to the venerability, but then we will need a miracle for the beatification, okay? So until the miracle is approved by, by the Pope, no cult is allowed to Dorothy. So I don't know if it, this clarifies a little bit more. And then I could probably go on with, um, with the miracle, Kevin. Yes, and, and the timeline more roughly. What do... that, is, uh, that is a tough, tough question because there are many, many things involved. First of all, the amount of pages involved, which is objective. I mean, there are, uh, as jo uh, Jeff uh, wrote in the chat, there are two thirds of a ton of paper involved in this process. So part of it, part of the drafting of the position will be studying, reading, first of all, reading all these papers and then studying and then writing a summary of these papers in order to show and to prove the heroic virtues of Dorothy. So speaking about time is very, you know, as canonists, we, we never want to be to, to give a, cl a clear uh, uh, question because otherwise we could compromise ourselves. <laughs> no, but um, I, I, I could see at least at least three years from now, at least to reach the venerability. But there are also many, many other aspects involved because when you see here the historical consultants and the theological consultants, there is a line. I mean, there are many servants of God that are waiting to be discussed and to be judged the cause. So it depends also on how many servants of God we have before Dorothy. So, and this is unpredictable at this point. So again, I, I cannot give a, a, um, a clear question, a clear answer to that. But of course, we're talking about years, at least three or more. One more question before you move on to the specifics of miracles that emerged in the chat, that just to clarify at this stage, the positios are remain confidential, correct? 100% confidential, and the church wants to be sure about that. And recently, um, uh, a decree was given stating that the positio must be under secrecy for 50, so 50, 50 years from the uh, printing of the positio. After the 50 years, a positio can be consulted, but only with the permission of the dicastery for the causes of the saints. And the reason why is that there are many witnesses involved in these cases. So the church wants also to safeguard the intimacy, the privacy of whatever has been said during the, the process. So that's why the Positio can never be uh, made public. 
And that question came from DL Mayfield, who has a new book out on Dorothy, which is um, which has gotten rave reviews from a number of, uh, of friends. Uh, so just to unruly saints. Uh, so why don't we talk a bit more? Why don't we get into the miracles? I, a lot of I say to my students that some of the saint making may seem often as the, the metaphor is used as sausage making. But I, I like to use the, the reference of, of pizza making uh, with the grandmother in the in the kitchen making making the, the nice pizza. So what what is our uh, what is what is the miracles here and what what do we need what do we need to be thinking of as in this process because this is an invitation for us who might be supporting this to to continue to be involved. Yes. So at this point, after the venerability, as I said. Uh, things are really in the hand of God. Um, because the miracle is, as I said, is the proof that God um, has approved what the Pope has said on that servant of God. So at that point, it's really God who decides whether the miracle will come or not. But on our side, we can be, we, we can contribute to the miracle because as I said, uh, Dorothy is a friend. So, and the intercessory power of Dorothy is that we can talk to her, ask her, challenge her, and of course, ask God through her, okay? So at this point, after the vulnerability, what we need, again, is a miracle for the beatification. Before I start, I would like to clarify that there are two kinds of miracles what we call a technical miracle, which is very, very rare. I will give you an example. If somebody will fall from the fifth floor and nothing will happen, that is a technical miracle. But the second uh, level of miracle, which is the most common, is the medical miracle, which, me which deals with, uh, with a healing, a healing from a disease. That is more common. That is what happens, I mean, most frequently, okay? So what I will talk about now is really the medical miracle. And I will leave the technical miracle to um, other, you know, probably uh, readings. They are very interesting, actually, but they are very rare. So what we need to prove in the medical miracle are two aspects. The first aspect is the theological element. The theological element needs to show that we ask the intercession of Dorothy and nobody else. So the theological aspect is really the theological um, level of the prayer. So to whom did we ask this miracle uh, to happen, okay? And then the scientific element, which is actually the, the medical aspect of the miracle. So I will start with the theological element and with the prayer. In order to be recognized as a, as a true miracle, the theological element must show that the prayer was antecedent. So it happened before the miracle. And that is quite obvious. Okay, We cannot attribute to Dorothy uh, a miracle if the miracle already took place and then we pray to 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 Dorothy okay that that I think that really makes sense and the second thing is that the mirror the prayer was direct to her and not to anyone else um many times it happens then when we have a problem which is also uh, understandable when we have a problem we we try to call up all our friends, so St. Francis, St. Catherine, St. whatever, St. okay, no, the miracle should prove in order to be attributed to Dorothy that we only asked that favor, that intercession through the intercession of Dorothy and nobody else. But the church allows also that the Blessed Virgin could be uh, prayed and Jesus and God, because there is no conflict of interest between them and, and Dorothy, of course. Okay, so this is the theological element. Probably there will be other questions, but I will just um, switch to the next element. 
which is the scientific element. As I said, when we talk about healing, we need to be um, sure that it really happened uh, on the medical on the medical level. Okay. The first thing to prove is that it was inexplicable according to the medical science, to the medical knowledge of today. And how can we prove that it was inexplicable? Because we need to look at the diagnosis, the prognosis, and the therapy used for that disease. The more the disease is um, terrible, so to speak, the, the more the disease is bad, the more the prognosis is poor. So if we know that for that disease, there is no chance for the patient, the more the miracle would be inexplicable. And that makes sense, I guess. The second thing is that it should be, it must be instantaneous. A true miracle must happen now in a time frame which is very, very short. Otherwise, the therapy, if there was a therapy involved and it takes some months or, or years, of course, that could be attributed to the therapy, not to the miracle, not to the intercession of Dorothy. The third aspect is that it should be complete. God makes things in a proper way. So if a disease is healed, God will never leave uh, the, the person half healed, so to speak. The, the healing will be complete, okay? And the fourth aspect is that it should be lasting. Again, since God does everything in the proper way, the healing must be lasting. So if the, the disease will uh, appear again after one year, it means that it's not lasting at the, and that the miracle could not be uh, considered as such, okay? So I would finish here because I've done, I've said many things, many are were very technical, so I don't want to get the people bored. <laughs> Thank you, Emanuele. I'll, I'll uh, ask follow-up question to George, and I think there are uh, there are some good questions that are emerging. Um, uh, one of the questions that emerged, just to follow up with you, Emanuele, is the uh, question coming from someone who's worked a lot on Dorothy, Rosalie Regal, uh, uh, is the question of equivalent uh, canonizations, right? We have had some saints, I think Thomas More was one, uh, Albert the Great, I think was another, people who have some of this process has been um, skipped a little bit by by the Holy Father. I think Pope Francis even did this recently with someone. Is that I know this is maybe the, not something we could pray for, or I don't know. No, 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 no. No, the equivalent beatification and canonization is really an exception, uh, an exceptional procedure. So it cannot be applied to Dorothy. It would be too technical to explain what is an equivalent uh, canonization, but mm, it, it applies only to those people whose cult and devotion lasted from uh, 100 years before 1634, which is the year, I, I mean, it's too complicated, but by the way, the cult should be very, very um, long. I mean, a long-term cult. So it doesn't apply to, to Dorothy at all. Great, uh, thank you for that clarification. George, uh, You want maybe can you just describe what the Guild has been doing to collect some of these these reports as of graces and favors, which is which is one category, but also some potential miracles that have surfaced. And I know this is a space of collaboration that we have with with this prayer network and with other groups of Benedictines and others that are out there. Uh, George, can you maybe just describe our subcommittee that we have, but also what what we've been doing in recent recent weeks on this. So we've been sending out to a variety of constituencies, uh, asking people to pray uh, for Dorothy's canonization and uh, to let us know of any graces, favors, or potential miracles uh, that uh, they might be able to identify. Um, we, we now have around 100 uh, cases that qualify as, as graces and favors. Uh, that we don't have anything yet 
that that reaches the level of miracle. Um, of course, these graces and favors, and the more that we have of them, the, it strengthens the positio. Uh, in fact, we're going to send to a Waldery Hilgeman, the Roman postulator, all of these graces and favors that he will include in his positio to show the continuing uh, prayer and interest of, of the people in Dorothy Day's uh, canonization. But we are asking people, and one of the, one of the goals of the, the guild, now that the diocesan phase has been completed, the canonical responsibilities of the guild are less, um, where the, the guild is taking on the responsibility of trying to identify, identify a miracle. And I think um, Emanuele's explanation here is very helpful. Uh, one, of the, one of the items that we learned is, uh, and this is, this, is a little, this is kind of sad, but often we hear about people who have experienced cancer or suffering with cancer um, because of the fact that it's hard to determine if cancer is finally uh, uh, cured or uh, how long it would be. It's, it's not a great candidate. So uh, what we need to do is continue to pray for people who, who suffer and to respond to them. They make wonderful uh, graces and favors, though, if, if people um, have been cured. So uh, we're, we're looking for those miracles. Uh, I think, again, Emanuele has given us a pretty good framework